Hello guys, welcome back to Photographics Academy. All right, so today we're going to be looking at how you can transform your studio backdrops, your normal regular flag studio backdrops into something really, really amazing. So today we're going to be using this fashion shoot we did over the week to, you know, create something unique using this particular backdrop. And trust me, it's going to be really, really beautiful. By the end of this video, you are going to learn little, little tricks you can use to transform your studio backdrop and get really amazing results. So without wasting much of your time, let's quickly get started. The first thing I'm going to do is to crop this image. Yes, definitely. So as you are cropping it, I want to have some negative space in the image because I will not want to be losing all that texture and all that smooth effect on the background. And if you are not cropping with space, you are not going to have all of that. So I'm going to give it some negative space over here then make sure your contents are where it's turned on so that once you just crop it, it's going to fill up all those negative space for you. Beautiful, the job is done. Now, the next thing I want to do is to separate the object from the background. And to do that, I'm going to make a selection of my object. Then right click and go to select inverse. Once in, inside your select inverse, just remove all the areas you do not want in the selection. Remove it from the selection beautiful okay so once this is done make a duplicate of your background or before you do that darken the background down a bit yes just darken it down a bit depending on what you want to do though i want my own slightly darker right yes so make a duplicate of your background there right click and go to layer the airport i'm going to smooth now the background so hold your control click on the background selection again to reload the selection then go to filter Go to blur, go to Gaussian blur. So I, I do not want it like flat. I want it to still have its dimensions, but you know, looking smooth. Press OK and press Ctrl D. Now it's time to bring in our backdrop. But before we do that, make sure that your object layer is above this area. Then go to your, uh, what is it called? Go to your solid background. Pick up your move tool and drag it over your image. So place it over here. Now, the next thing is to scale it in. So we'll just hold our alternate and scale it in. But I do not want to lose all these textures behind here. Because if I do lose the textures, it's not going to look beautiful. For example, if we scale in so much that she's properly standing on it, we are losing the textures. So what do we do? Very simple. We will create the floor that we want. And to create the floor that we want, we just have to, you know, remove this area. So we no longer have floor on the background. Make a duplicate of the background itself. Press Ctrl T, right click and go to layer, flip vertically. So once you do flip vertically, it's going to turn upside down, right? I want this above, yes. Then pick up your move tool, hold your control to spread it out. The idea of spreading it out is to give you that perspective that it is lying down on the floor. Then pull it down like this. Press OK. Now we get that perspective that is lying down on the floor. We can even drop a shadow over it. Double click on the main background. Go to drop shadow. And it's just going to, you know, drop a very sweet shadow on it. Of course, it needs to be soft. We need to make sure to soften it out. Just something very, very simple. Soften it out. Then reduce the opacity. So the idea for this is just to make sure that floor have the effect of two areas touching each other. So if you look here, you notice that contact. Now you can match the two layers together. While matched in, you now change the blend mode to overlay, multiply. Any blend mode that allows you work well, no. Overlay does the job, except for the fact that the floor here is too bright for my liking. I want the whole area looking dark so that my image can stand out. So what are we going to do? Pick up your curves or pick up your rectangular marquee tool and just select the floor like this. Then go to your curves layer and just darken down that area. Let's see, like this. Then change, go to your curves icon, then go back to the mask to further it. Change the blend mode to luminosity so that it doesn't affect the color so you see now we'll have the attention on the area where the lady is standing now another thing we want to restore is the shadows you notice our shadows are gone so to do that 
Just go to your background layer, create a mask for it, pick up your brush, and just restore the shadows back. Right? Beautiful. Now, another issue that I'm noticing is that my image and the background practically have very similar colors. And because of that, she's not standing out. So what do we do? I want to pop her own color, give her some shines so that she will be outstanding in the image. So to do that, I'm going to be using solid color. Very important. Because I love the saturation of the oranges or in the solid colors. Something around here. Press OK. Hide it. Make a duplicate of your image. Create a mask for one of the layers. Go to select, go to color range and select her skin tone. So just click on her skin. Go to your plus icon and select the other areas of the skin. So all the areas that are white are the areas that are selected. The areas that are black are the areas that are not selected. So we have a pre-boot selection here. Use the mask to replace the mask of the solid color. Now, if I turn on the solid color, you notice that the image is covered up in solid colors. So we just have to make sure we paint into the other areas that didn't get the painting. Then change the blend mode to soft light or even color. So we'll do color first to get some glows. Right? Beautiful. So you can as well decide to even push it towards the yellows a little bit and see the other skin tones you can achieve using this. So red is obviously not in the picture. Let's try and saturate this a bit more. This gives you a dark skin tone. I love the saturated color. So we just reduce it. And now change the, uh, make a duplicate and change the other one to soft light. Reduce it very, very well. So if we group the two colors together now, you notice the color difference we have created and we have even matched the skin tone, the before, the after. So we just have to pull it down a bit. So if you look at the edge of my hair, you'll notice that some of the original background is still showing up from there. So what to do? Create a mask for your image, pick up your brush and just paint over the hair. Those areas that have the original background showing up from behind them and it's going to take it away. So now you have a very clean selection and even the edges of the dress over here just, you know, fade out the edges to blend into the new background using the color of the new background like that. Beautiful. All right. The job is almost done. I think I'm seeing some white edge here too. Some white changes here. Okay, so that does the job. Now, the next thing to do is to find a very beautiful global color grading that is going to pull all this together. To do that, we'll be using our gradient map, change the blend mode to soft light and then reduce it a bit then go back into your gradient map change the gradient type to noise make sure your roughness is as low as let's say 10 then or uh, 25 and start clicking on randomize to see the other options is going to give you beautiful mm, i love this this is cool Okay. Let's look for something so nice. I think I love this. This is cool. Press OK. Reduce the feel, the, the intensity of it. Just bring it down a bit. And the next thing we want to do, maybe, is to create a photo filter. Maybe put a clean photo filter effect and just bring it down a bit. Let's bring it down a bit and we'll have something very, very unique. Let me show you the before and the after. This is the before. This is the after. This is the before. This is the after. So I'm going to create a stamp visible layer. Lastly, go to filter, go to camera raw. So here I'm going to add some contrast, increase the highlights just slightly to make it, you know, quite darker and accentuated. 
can even decide to add a little bit of vibrance to it then go to your effects and just add a very tiny vignetting effect there and the job is done this is the overall before and after this is the before this is the after this is the before this is the after thank you so much for watching if you have any question regarding anything we did go to the comment section drop the question and i will be willing to respond to them one more time thank you for watching this amazing video do make sure you subscribe to our youtube channel and if you subscribe turn on your notification bell to get notified every single time we drop the new video until then see you on the next one